wait for me. Just a minute. Are you Vicki McGuire? Why, yes. Won't you come in? I'm Larry Craig's wife. But I thought you were dead. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm very much alive. I understand you're planning to marry my husband. Yes, I was planning to. You were gone almost seven years and Larry didn't know where you were. And, and according to law... Forget the technicalities. It's not that I want him for myself. I most certainly don't. But he'll never marry you nor anyone else. I'll see to that. I wouldn't feel too badly about it, Miss McGuire. I'm doing you a favor. Good night. Is Larry Craig there? Club 7-Eleven. Thank you. Information, will you please give me the number of Club 7-Eleven on Hawthorne Boulevard? It's all your fault. If I'm not sleeping, I live on dreams instead of eating. I'm just a wreck and it's all your fault. Oh, it's all your fault if I'm not playing and having fun. And if I'm staying all by myself, well, it's all your fault. When you said that we were through, I tried to find somebody new. But I Club found out it wouldn't Who? Larry Craig? I haven't seen him all evening. Okay. Oh, it's all your fault when I'm not grandma, my grandma. Call you grandpa, it's all your fault. Oh, it's all your fault. If I'm not sleeping, I live on trees instead of eating. I'm just a wreck, and it's all your fault. Hello, Stevie. Why, hello, Mr. Craig. I just had a phone call for you. Yeah, who is it? But she wouldn't say and she wouldn't tell her to give me a message. Sure, yeah. Huh? Well, give me a double scotch. Pardon me, darling. Give me the show. If I was you, I'd sort of sit out the next thing. Yes, Stevie. No lectures, just scotch, huh? Sure, why not? Thank you. Where's my double scotch? Oh, it is right in front of you. No, come on, come on. I gotta have a chaser, Stevie. Oh, come on. Stop quibbling. Stop quibbling. Okay. You're the doctor. Nobody loves a quibbler, Stevie. Uh, you'd like to get back from his trip yet? Yeah, he got back the other day. You did, huh? He's a great fellow. He's been a friend of mine for years and years. Where is he? Well, he was around here a few minutes ago, but I guess he's out in his office now. Yeah, well, I better go check up on him. I don't want Lucky to get lost. Oh, it's all your fault if I'm not playing, having fun. And if I'm staying all by myself, well, it's all your fault. When you said that we were through, I tried to find somebody new. But I found out it wouldn't do, cause I'd rather be alone than with somebody new. Oh, it's all your fault when I'm not grandma, my grandkids will call you grandpa. Well, I'll just tell them it's all your fault. <laughs> Hello, Lucky. I didn't hear you knock. That's funny. I didn't. But this is a private office, you know. Okay. I won't let anybody in. I've never seen you like this before. That's funny. You look different, too. Now, look, Larry, don't you think you're going overboard? 
Not that I object to buying a drink, but well, that stuff isn't exactly tonic, you know. Well, the guy doesn't live forever. What are you celebrating? A long life or an early death? Don't you worry about me, Lucky. I can handle my liquor. Yeah, looks like it. Just as good as you can handle your women. I don't mix my women with scotch. Hmm, that's funny. It's got five hands. It's 10.45. Oh, it's 10.45. Okay, thank you, Lucky. Oh, Lucky. Now I know what I came in for. Did you have a good trip? Great trip, great. I'll take it easy, Larry. Okay, goodbye. Yeah, you were great tonight. The best little singer this town's ever had. You look like you're doing pretty good yourself. I'm going to go see my girl. She's wonderful. We're going to get married. Larry, you can't go out like that. Why don't you go lie down in my dressing room for a while? Oh, no, I don't want to lie down. i got to go see Vicky. You're in no condition to see anyone. Come on, Larry. No. All right, all right. Tom? But just for you. Yes. If it was for anybody I else, I wouldn't do it for a minute. I wouldn't. I, I'm going to do it. But it's just for you, you understand? I know it. I know it. Now, you lie down, Larry. Yeah. Be a good boy. Close your pretty eyes. You don't want that wonderful girl to see you like this, now, do you? No. No, she no. might think I drink. Sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're a real pal. All right. All right. About it, let them hear you shout it. Don't let anyone kid you. It's a fine old world. Yeah, Larry Craig. Oh, he was here early in the evening. Well, he must have left a couple of hours ago. Somebody want Larry Craig? Yeah. Well, oh, he's asleep in my dressing room. I'll get him for you. Just a minute. He'll be right here. Larry. Larry, wake up. Hmm? What? What are you doing here? You're wanted on the telephone, Larry. Come on now, pull yourself oh. together. Yeah, sure. Ooh, thanks for letting me park. From now on, I'm going to stick to banana splits. Where's the phone? At the bar. Oh, yeah. Uh, what time is it? Almost one o'clock. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Lucky. Hello, Bone Larry. Yeah, thanks. Steve. Hello. Oh, Vicky, darling. Oh, Larry, I've been trying to reach you all evening. I must see you. All right, I'll pick you up in 15 minutes, okay? All right, goodbye, dear. Nice place, Steve. All right, Larry. I knew she was in town, Vicky. She's been back a couple of weeks. Oh, but Larry, you should have told me. Well, I trust have upset you. Well, I had to find out about it sometime. Look, the day Norma disappeared, we had an appointment with her lawyer. I'm sure she hasn't uh, had a change of heart as far as I'm concerned. I wish I could feel about it as you do. But your wife made it quite clear that she had no idea of ever giving you up. Ah, Norma's just impulsive, that's all. Her vanity's probably hurt to think I'd want to marry another woman. Where are we going? To Norma's. Straighten this thing out. Oh, well, isn't it rather late? It's all right. Norma keeps rather late hours. Larry, would it be all right if I waited here for you? Sure, whatever you want, dear. I won't be long. Yeah. Well, hello. Hello, 
think I know you. I'm Larry Craig. Glad to meet you, Mr. Craig. My name is Harmon. How do you do? I'd like to see my wife. Come in. What's going on here? Well, I told you no one was to come in here. This is Mr. Craig. He wants to see his wife. Mrs. Craig is dead. I'll have to ask you to identify the body. Norma. Mrs. Craig was murdered. What are you doing here? Oh, I, I'm waiting for Mr. Craig. Well, I think you'd better wait inside. What's wrong? Mrs. Craig has been murdered. But I just talked to her a couple of hours ago. She, she died kind of sudden. Come on. Larry, this is terrible. What's your name, miss? Vicki McGuire. Friend of Mrs. Craig's? Well, I only met her once, and that was just for a few moments. She's a friend of mine. Oh, I see. Your wife didn't object to your having uh, friends? My wife disappeared almost seven years ago. Prior to that time, we were separated for more than a year. Miss McGuire and I are planning to be married when Norma suddenly turned up about two weeks ago. That sort of upset your marriage plans? She says she spoke to Mrs. Craig a couple of hours ago. Kill it. What did you two talk about? Well... It's all right. Go ahead. We have nothing to hide. Well, she told me she'd never give up, Mr. Craig, and for me to forget about marrying him. What took you guys so long? Higgins got hooked in the gin run again. Where's the body? In there. Come on, I can't wait all night. Hi, Captain. Hi, Captain, uh, boys. Why don't people get murdered at a respectable hour? Maybe we could pass a law or something. Captain, isn't there someplace else where we could talk? By all means. I know this isn't very pleasant. Come on. Be sure and get a picture of the mark on her neck. Your wife was strangled by a thin wire, Mr. Craig. All right, hold it still. Don't let this question bother you. Where were you two all evening? I went to the 7-Eleven Club about 10.30. I was there until almost 1. See anyone you knew? Yes, several people. I'd like to talk to them. I have no objections. How about you, Miss McGuire? She was at home all evening. I talked to her on the telephone. I think Miss McGuire can answer for herself. Well, I was gone for about a half an hour. I went to a restaurant nearby. What time was that? Oh, I should say about 11.30. Look, surely you don't suspect either of us? Just routine. Harmon. Check Miss McGuire's alibi. She said she went to a restaurant. She'll tell you where. It's okay. Take her home. Yes, Captain. Come on, Miss. I thought you went home, Mr. Craig. I was on my way, Gladys, but this gentleman was curious about where I spent the evening. You were here, of course. Do you remember what time Mr. Craig came in? Not exactly, but I think it was around quarter to eleven. Say, what is this, a quiz? My wife has been murdered, Gladys. And I'm number one on the suspect list. But you were in the club, Mr. Cray. Did you see him leave? Why, yes. He took his hat, he checked it with me. About what time was that? It must have been after 12.30. I remember because my boyfriend had just called me to tell me he couldn't pick me up. Thanks, Gladys. Who else saw you? I had a couple of drinks at the bar. Sorry, Larry, but we're closed. Steve, uh, you remember my being here earlier this evening, don't you? Sure, but I didn't think you'd remember. You were pretty well lit up. How long did Mr. Craig stay? Oh, a cop, huh? Yeah. It's all right. Go on. Uh, just routine. Just long enough to have a couple of drinks. I'd say about 10 or 15 minutes. Who else saw you? 
From here, I went into Lucky Brandon's office. I was there for a few minutes. Then on the way out, I bumped into Lucille Compton. She's the singer here at the club. Uh, she made me take a nap. I wonder if she's still here. Miss Compton's still here? I didn't see her go, though. She might still be in the dressing room. Thanks, Dean. Well, are you satisfied I was here? Yes, you have a perfect alibi, Mr. Craig. Almost too perfect. Larry Craig. I have a friend with me. May we come in? Sure. Come on. Uh, Lucille, this is Captain Brown. This is Miss Compton. Good evening, Miss Compton. How do you do? Lucille, you remember my being here earlier If this you don't evening? mind, I'll ask the questions. What time did you first see Mr. Craig? It was after my third number. That was about, uh, 10.55. He says he went to sleep here in your dressing room. Is that right? Why, well, yes. Say, what's this all about? What's happened? My wife has been murdered, Lucille. Oh, no, Larry. Well, I thought you hadn't heard from her in years. Well, she came back about two weeks ago. The captain here is checking up on me. Oh, Larry couldn't have had anything to do with it. Why, well, he was asleep on that couch until almost one o'clock. Were you with him all that time? Of course not. I had to work. But I stopped in as often as I could to see if he was all right. Believe me, Captain. Larry was in no condition to get off that couch. Come in. Oh, didn't know you were coming, Lucille. Just wanted to give you a check. I'm glad you came in, Lucky. Anything wrong, Captain? The uh, captain just wants to know what time you saw me early this evening. Look. What are you talking about? I didn't see you this evening. Well, Lucky, you must be kidding. I. I was in your office. I helped myself to a drink. You better lay off that liquor. You're beginning to imagine things. Look, look, you were at the safe when I came in. Surely you must remember. Look, you better see a psychiatrist. You weren't in my office. Not while I was there, anyway. This is serious, Lucky. Larry's wife has been murdered. Why, he was right here in this room for a couple of hours, anyway. So he's got his alibi. You saw him. I didn't. You're not telling the truth, Lucky, and you know it. Come to think of it, I wonder if you might not have a reason for lying. When I left here, you were sneaking in the back door. I called to you and you pretended you didn't hear me. Now I know you were drunk. I don't believe there are any further questions. Thanks, Lucky. Run along now, Mr. Craig. If I need you, I'm sure I can find you. All right, thanks, Captain. Thanks, Mr. Captain, you don't think he possibly could have killed his wife, do you? If he was here, he couldn't have. Good night, Miss Compton. Come in, Captain. I didn't see him. I believe you're lucky. Just want to check a few things. Sure. You knew Norma Craig, didn't you? Yeah, been friends for a long time. Wasn't she interested in the 7-Eleven club? She loaned me $10,000 when I first opened the club. I don't see what that has to do with the murder. You didn't seem surprised when you heard she was dead. I've got a poker face. I wonder why Craig insists he saw you sneak in the rear door of the club. He didn't see me sneak in the rear door or any other door. And for a very good reason. I never left the club all evening. You're sure you didn't drop over to see Mrs. Craig just to say hello after her long absence? Look, Captain, you're wasting your time with me. Why don't you try somebody else? <laughs> well, I guess I'll be running along, Lucky. Yeah. Drop me any time. Thanks. Vicky, darling, I was beginning to worry about you. You were so long answering the phone. I just got in. The detectives wanted to talk to that girl in the restaurant who waited on me. We had to go to her boarding house. Yeah, well, I had quite a session, too. Everyone at the club remembered seeing me, but lucky Brandon. But don't worry, dear. It's going to be all right. I, I can't tell you how sorry I am to have dragged you into all this. 
Well, it wasn't your fault, Larry. How were you to know? All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Sorry if I startled you, Miss McGuire. How did you get in here? You left your door unlocked. You must have a clear conscience. What do you want, Captain? I just got through talking to Mr. Harmon. He said the waitress didn't remember what time you were in. But she did remember that I was there. Why were you so nervous when you were in the restaurant? Oh, I don't know. Mrs. Craig coming back from the murder and all those questions. You came right back here from the restaurant? Yes. See anyone you knew? No, I didn't. No one call on you? You didn't drop in any other apartment? I spent the evening reading and trying to get in touch with Larry. Miss McGuire, tell me, when do you and Mr. Craig plan on being married? Oh, I don't know. Certainly not until all this is cleared up. If Mrs. Craig hadn't come back, you would be free to marry him? In about two months. Mr. Craig had spoken to a lawyer about it. Well, don't let these questions bother you. If I thought for a moment you had anything to do with the murder, you would be in jail right now. And that goes for Mr. Craig, too. Well, then why are you here? I've got to get all the information I can. Just routine. Sorry I disturbed you, Miss McGuire. Good night. Good night, Ken. Larry, I'm sure Captain Brown suspects it. Oh, that's ridiculous. He was satisfied with your explanation of where you spent the evening, wasn't he? I'm afraid not. The only person who saw me was the girl in the restaurant. She doesn't remember what time she saw me. You know, I, I can't figure him out anyway. At least three different people saw me at the 7-Eleven Club, and I still don't think he's convinced I spent the evening there. I guess he figures my motive is too good to disregard. Well, as far as the police are concerned, I wanted Norm out of the way, too. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. But in the meantime, I'm hungry. How about you? I'm done. got to snap out of it. Oh, I'm all right. No, you're not. Now, look, everything's going to work out fine. I hope so. I'm afraid this is more serious than we think. Hello? Hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no, no, not at all, Captain. No. Sit down. Thank you. How are you, Miss McGuire? Fine, thank you. Have some lunch. Mm, just finished. Anything new on the case? Not a thing. The murder was pretty clever. He left no fingerprints and absolutely no clues. Mr. Craig, why did you and your wife separate? I don't know. Just didn't get along, I guess. Maybe it was my fault. It wasn't because she helped him start the 7-Eleven Club, was it? No. Oh, although I knew about that. You see, I never questioned my wife about what she did with her money, Captain. It was hers. She inherited it from her mother. Oh, I see. I didn't sleep very well last night. Kept thinking about something you said. You are sure you saw Brandon slip into the club? Yes, I'm quite sure. Well, was he interested in your wife? Uh, that is, uh, personally? I don't know. Although I always had the feeling Norma was quite fond of him. And you didn't leave the club, not even for a little while? No, Captain. Not even for a little while. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something pretty soon. DA is getting very impatient. Look here, Captain Brown. I've established where I was the night of the murder. You don't believe it. Miss McGuire is the last person in the world you should suspect. And yet you pop up in her apartment, I suppose, hoping that she'll say something to incriminate herself. Now, you're not following us around because you're lonesome. If you think we're guilty, why don't you arrest us? You're jumping at conclusions. Merely routine. Well, I don't like your routine. Well, I must be running along. Goodbye, Miss McGuire. Bye, Captain. I sure would like to know why Brandon wouldn't alibi for you. Good day. Larry, I wonder why he did deny that he saw you. I wish I knew. 
Captain Brown evidently thinks he had something to do with the murder, or he wouldn't have brought up his name. Maybe when I saw Lucky sneaking in the back of the club, he was coming back from Norma's. He wouldn't recognize me because he wanted an alibi for himself. He could bear watching. Larry, I could do it. Do what? Watch him. Well, I could get a job in the club. He doesn't know me. I thought you didn't like nightclubs. Well, what difference does that make? Maybe I could find out something that even the police couldn't. Vicki, you're not serious. Don't you realize that if Brandon is the murderer and he finds you snooping around the club, your life wouldn't be worth a plug nickel? And don't you realize the spot we're in? Well, I've got to do it. Oh, no, no. Uh, is Mr. Brandon here? He won't be here for a couple of hours. Oh, pardon me. Are you the girl who photographs the guests here? Yes. Could I see you for a moment? Sure. Come in the dark room. I have to load some plates. What's on your mind, kid? How would you like a vacation? <laughs> who wouldn't? Look, here's $50. I want your job for a couple of days. Say, I do. You've got to help me out. There's a guy here I'm just crazy about, and he doesn't even know that I exist. All I want to do is get acquainted. Say, who is this lucky Romeo? The bartender. Steve? I don't know what there is about the guy, but he just sends me. <sighs> now I've heard everything. Will you do it? Do you know how to work one of these cameras? Of course, that's easy. What do you think? I'll do it, but believe me, you're making a bad deal. Thanks. Hiya, Margie. Let me look at you, Steve. Hey, what's going on here? Maybe I'm crazy. Well, I ain't gonna argue that part with you, Margie. Steve, a gal just came in here and gave me 50 bucks to take my place, just so she could be near you. Huh? What's the matter with her? That's what I'd like to know. Irresistible, that's all. Well, so long, Casanova. Have you picked a ticket? Make a nice souvenir if you visit to the Club 7-Eleven. Are you new here? Oh, no, I've been here a long time. How would you like it? Straight on a profile? Straight on if you don't mind. Now, look at me and smile. How are you tonight, Mr. Brandon? Hello, Pep. How are you? Will you have a drink with us, Mr. Brandon? Thanks. I can dish it out, but I can't take it. <laughs> well, some other time, Lucky. You bet. You can destroy that picture, Miss. Hmm. Yes, Mr. Open. Is that something new? I'll have it for you in about a half hour. Brave man eating in your own place. I'm used to it. Join me? Oh, thank you. Been watching the papers and I see you haven't cracked that crank case yet. I must be slipping. How did you and Norma Craig stand? Meaning what? She owned a bit of this place, didn't she? She was paid off a long time ago. You're a hard man to discourage, Captain. If you keep this up, you're going to have me believing that I'm under suspicion. Everyone is until this case is cleared up. Well, guess I'll be running along. I'll be seeing you, Lucky. I don't doubt it. I hope it's all right. You'll soon find out. Anything wrong? Why, no, Mr. Brandon. Oh, Bill, uh, 
Come on, get me a couple of cigars, will you? Yes, sir. What happened to Marge? Well, she was taken ill. She asked me if I could help her out for a few days. Why don't she tell me? Well, I'm sure I don't know. It happened so suddenly. Maybe I'd better call her up and see if there's anything I can do. Oh, no. Uh, she didn't go to her home. She's staying with a sick aunt. And she mustn't be disturbed. Where'd you learn to work one of these things? Oh, I've been around the camera a lot. I've been a photographic model for years. I'd like to see some of the pictures you've made. Well, a few of them will be The developed. iris is completely closed. Oh. oh. Well, it must have just happened, Mr. Brandon. Here are cigars, Mr. Brandon. Oh, thanks, sir. Say, your boss seems like a nice guy. Yeah, but don't let it get you. He's got a lot of women crazy about him. Any one in particular? Oh, I understand this Norma Craig, who was murdered. She used to run around with him. Uh... Did you ever see her? Yeah, a couple of nights ago. She came into the club. Boy, was Lucille Compton, so she thought she had the inside track. Then this Craig woman shows up after being gone seven years. But Lucille ain't getting no place either. She's only kidding herself. Gosh, I'm glad I'm not pretty. You can't get away with it, Lucky. After all I've done for you, the least you could do is show me a little consideration. For your own good, I suggest you don't interfere with my business. You're set here. Yeah? You have nothing to worry about. Well, I'll give you something to worry about. I know where you went Tuesday night. Norma Craig. I'll talk to you about that later. Anything I can do, Miss Compton? No. Leave me alone. I couldn't help overhearing your conversation with Mr. Brandon. Oh, forget it, kid. I've heard a lot about Norma Craig. Did you know her very well? Yes. Too well. Believe me, that woman had it coming. From what I understand, she had a way of stirring up trouble. Yeah. See where it got her? Say, did you ever hear of her husband, Larry Craig? Sure. Everybody's interested in the Craig murder. What about Mr. Craig? Well, he and Mrs. Craig were... Yes? You're on, Miss Compton. Talk to you some other time, kid. Surprised seeing you here, Miss McGuire. Just a hunch, Captain, but I think you'll find the answer of who killed Norma Craig right here in this club. Lucille loves Brandon, and she accused him of being in Norma's house the night of the murder. And if we hadn't been interrupted, I know Lucille would have told me plenty. What were they arguing about? Well, I got in on the tail end of it, but she accused Brandon of being at Norma's the night of the murder. Well, that's interesting. Did he deny it? No, he just cut her short and told her he'd talk to her later. Did you tell Captain Brown that? Mm-hmm. He seemed very interested in something the boy in the developing room told me. Norma came to see Brown at the club a couple of days ago. Say, do you know Lucille very well? Why, no, not well. Why do you ask? She asked me if I knew you. She was about to say something concerning you when she was called out. Vicki, I wish you'd forget this business of playing detective. Are you giving the police a couple of leads? Why don't you let them handle it? Look, Larry, I've started something, and I've got to see it through. I worry about you, Vicki. <laughs> you shouldn't. Captain Brown sticks pretty close. Your mother raised a very stubborn little girl, Vicki. But I think I'll marry you just the same. <laughs> you know, Larry, Lucky Brandon isn't at all what I expected him to be. He isn't? No, in the first place, he's much younger. It sort of frightens me. Still something fascinating about the man. Maybe it's his voice or his eyes. Hey, wait a minute. You're not falling for him, are you? <laughs> you know I don't fall that easily. 
I know that. Uh oh. Hello, Larry. Well, surprised you recognize me. What are you so worried about? Didn't kill Norma, did you? You know I didn't. Too bad Norma showed up. Understand you were all set to get married. No. Who told you that? Carrier pigeon. Tell me, uh, who is the lucky girl you're so crazy about? Why don't you ask the pigeon? Baby, give Stevie a little kiss. Oh, now listen, what are you doing in here? Get back the bar, you lose your job. You talk like we're married already, honey. Come on, give baby a kiss. Oh, please, Steve. I don't understand you women. One minute you act like you're crazy about a guy, and the next minute you act like you're just crazy. Give Stevie a little, little kiss. What's going on here? Well, we were just talking. You mind if I enter into the conversation? Get back to work. Yes, sir. How did this happen? Well, I don't know. I think Steve had the wrong idea of me. I'll have him fired in the morning. Oh, please don't. I'm sure he won't try anything like that again. Oh, just a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Brandon? How did you get in here? Oh, your door was open. I was looking for some plates for my camera. There you are, miss. Thank you, Mr. Brandon. Sorry we're in such a hurry this afternoon. We might have had lunch together. You were with Larry Craig, weren't you? Why, yes, I was. I'd be more careful in choosing my friends if I were you. Will that be all, Mr. Brandon? Yes, for the time being.
for me. I'm going to kill you, Lucky. Put that gun down, Lucille. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, yes, I do. You're not going to toss me over and get away with it. It's all right. The gun went off accidentally. I didn't know it was loaded. <laughs> Close that door, will you, miss? Is there anything I can do, Mr. Brandon? I wonder if you'd mind taking Miss Compton home. Now pull yourself together, Lucy. You're going to be all right. Are you sure you feel all right? I think so. I'll go change my clothes and be back in a minute. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello? Oh, hello, Vicky. What happened before you hung up on me? Things are happening fast. Lucille tried to shoot Brandon, and I'm going to take her home. This is my chance to get her to talk, so keep your fingers crossed. She might even tell me something about you. All right, I'll speak to you later. Goodbye, Larry. Goodbye, dear. Oh, are you ready? I don't think it's necessary for you to see me home. Oh, I wouldn't think of letting you go alone. Just a minute, please. down that alley. Why, no, Miss Compton. Are you afraid you're being followed? No. I I'm just a little nervous. Thanks for seeing me home. If you'd like, I'd be glad to spend the night. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I'll be all right now. I really don't think you should be alone. No, thanks. Just the same. I feel pretty safe now that I'm in my apartment. Good night. Thanks again. Good night. What did you tell her? What are you doing here? What did you tell her? Well, what did I tell who? Vicky. Well, I, I didn't tell her anything. Oh. Don't look at me like that. Thought she could run away. No. I did everything you asked. I alibied for you. Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry, you can't. I, I'll keep my mouth shut. I, I, I'll keep your secret. I want her dead, too. You talk too much. Oh, Miss McGuire. Oh, Captain Brown. Oh, I found that in Brandon's desk. He paid Norma Craig $10,000 for something. Well, this may be very valuable. It's dated on the night of a murder. See, maybe that's where Brandon went when Larry saw him. I was surprised when I saw you come home with Miss Compton. I didn't know you were friends. Well, Brandon asked me to. They'd had some sort of a squabble and she tried to shoot him. I thought maybe I could get her to talk, but she wouldn't let me stay. Well, come on, Miss McGuire. I have a few questions to ask her myself. gone out without our seeing her. Hey, what's going on here? You'll wake up all my tenants. Are you the manager of this apartment house? You bet I am. Get out of here or I'll call an officer. I am an officer. We'd like to get in that apartment. Have you got a search warrant? Please let us in the apartment. Miss Compton may need it. Oh, well, all right.
But it can't be. She was alive just a few minutes ago. Angled by a wire, just like Norma Craig. If I hadn't left her, maybe this wouldn't have happened. You know, I always thought Miss Compton was implicated in this somehow. Well, she evidently thought someone wanted to kill her. You say she tried to take a shot at Brandon? Yes, but he took the gun away from her. I wonder if he could have followed her home. I just saw a man cut down the fire escape. I tried to follow him, but he gave me the slip. Phone headquarters. Get the boys over here right away. We've had another murder. Okay. I'll take you home as soon as they get here. Good night, Miss McGuire. Good night, Captain. About you. Something terrible's happened. Lucille Compton's been murdered. I just left her apartment. Lucille murdered? Who killed her? If we knew that, we'd know who killed Norma. She was strangled the same way. It's like a nightmare, isn't it? Come on, let's take a little drive. You won't be able to sleep after this. I know I won't. No, he must have been waiting on the fire escape for me to leave. How do you know it was a man? One of the policemen saw him, but he got away. Lucille tell you? Why, nothing. She didn't have a chance to. You're keeping something from me. What did Lucille tell you? Why should I keep anything from you? I'm sure I don't know. Larry, you're acting awfully strange. Am I? I... I, I guess I'm just a little upset, that's all. <laughs> I understand. Let's forget it. Hey, you. Is that your car over there? Yes. Let's see your driver's license. What are you doing around here? Taking a walk, getting some air. Well, you'd better move along. There's been a lot of robbers around here. All right, thanks. the ride, Larry. Good night. Aren't you going to ask me up? Well, it's rather late, Larry. Just for a little while. <laughs> I'm afraid not. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Would you please send a cab to 4468 Hillhurst? As soon as possible, please.
Gentleman Club, please. Captain Brown. Well, do you know where I can get in touch with him? Well, never mind. I'll try later. Yeah? She left here a couple of hours ago. She did. Well, I'll see if I can find her. Oh, Vicky. Hey, Vicky. I've got a call for you. Thanks. Yes? Hello, Vicky. Uh, I called your house, and when I didn't get an answer, I... I'm glad you found me, Larry. I must see you. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm at home. Why don't you come over? I'll be right there, Larry. Place? Yeah. I think we'd better take a little run down to headquarters. Finally got around to me, huh? Some more routine? No, not this time. I wouldn't take this too lightly if I were you, Lucky. We found some of your fingerprints in Lucille's apartment. Also, some of Larry Craig's. We're gonna pick up Craig on our way in. Yeah, I can understand that. Lucille was sick last week, and I dropped by to see if there's anything I could do for her. Now, well, you can explain that down at headquarters. Come on. I wanted to go back to Lucille's apartment. I had an idea she had something to do with Norma's murder. I found this on her dressing table. It's just Captain Brown. I know. I tried to get in touch with him. Give me that. Larry, what's come over you? Read it. Dear Captain Brown, I'm afraid for my life, so I'm leaving the city. If anything happens to me, I want you to know who's responsible. I foolishly alibied for the murderer of Norma Craig. The murderer is... Oh, Larry, no, not you. You knew that? Lucille told you. I strangled Norma because I wanted to marry you. I killed Lucille because she talked too much. 
I tried to get you to keep out of this, but you wouldn't listen to me. Larry, you're mad. Perfect alibi. Too perfect. I guess that clears you, Lucky. But tell me, just out of curiosity, why did you refuse to admit you saw Craig in the club that night? Well, I had to have an alibi myself. I got a frantic phone call from Norma. By the time I got there, she was dead. I'd been up there a little earlier to pay her back that $10,000 I borrowed. Besides that, I went back to pick up my fountain pen that I'd left there. I see. For a while, it looked pretty bad. Yeah, I know. I wonder if it would be expecting too much if I ask you to take Miss McGuire home. No. She promises not to spy on me. I'll do my best. Exciting story, The Dark Corner, which gripped the readers of Good Housekeeping magazine, now spins its fascinating plot on the screen. These are the players who bring you this widely discussed story of an obsession for beauty that becomes a passion for murder. He loathed her rather intimately, I'm afraid. But he couldn't. I mean, she's too old for him. Love is not the exclusive province of adolescence, my dear. It's a heart ailment that strikes all age groups. Like my love for you. The Dark Corner dares to tell of those who can defy the rules of respectability and the hunted who must violate the law in order to live. What's his name? Who's paying you? If you don't want to lose that stardust look in your eyes, get going while the door's still open. You stick around here, you'll get grafters, shysters, two-bit thugs, and maybe worse. Maybe me. I like those odds. I'll take them.
very tired. It's not that. It's just that I've dreamed of all this for so long. I told myself I wouldn't act like a fool and go to pieces. That's all right, dear. Just come with me. I'm very sorry we don't have a bedroom for you on the first floor. All right, Anne. Well, isn't anybody going to say hello to me? Uncle Dan! Well, Dan, dear, how are you? We didn't expect you until eight. Well, we took an early train. Uh, Evelyn's father, you know. Oh. You know, Dan, I saw Bernhardt make an entrance like that once. This gave me the same lump in my throat. <laughs> Hello, Agan. <laughs> you hard-bitten old cynic, you never had a lump. <laughs> Just a time for a drink, anyway, Dan. How are you, Dan? Yeah, that crazy. Oh. How are you, don't any of you know? This is probably the first time in her life she's ever been in a nice house with nice people. Well, if it isn't a girl who was hanging from a cliff, page 64, last month's causal policy. Hello, Dad. Hey, how'd you come out? Were you rescued? This month on page 54. <laughs> I put fresh papers in the drawer. Mr. Hackett just moved out. Oh? Did he have this room? Did he? Oh, dear. Would you mind terribly if... I asked Hilda to fumigate in here. Well, well, if you like it. Oh, I hardly think you'd catch anything from Ernest, except maybe a grumpy disposition. I know it seems silly. But when you're sick, you know, you get so you watch everything. I'll speak to Hilda, dear. Don't bother about it now. Oh, Anne. I've got to 
grab. I used to have one, you know. Not electric, though. Can I play it? Of course. It's yours now. For the whole summer? For as long as you like. Look, Anne. Liebestraum. Dream of love. It was always my favorite. Till Papa broke it. You mean he broke it purposely? He wasn't always himself. He was right. Night and day. You know, when you lie alone and wait, and hope somebody will come and see you. You have music. It's not so bad. That's why Mr. Hackett wanted you to have it. That's very sweet. Is there anything else you'd want now? No, thank you, Anne. We plan to eat early, so you won't be too long, will you? No, I won't, Dad. You know, I'd feel much better, darling, if you'd lock that door. Throw someone sleep walks and faces. Who cares? I'm no cloud hopper, you know. Oh, I wish someone would see us. Get this. Oh. Oh, get possible. There's only one thing wrong. And take your slippers off. Oh, no. Take them off. I got mine off. It's wonderful. I've always wanted to dance with my bare feet. Go on, try it. Outside somewhere. Come on, Lee, darling. We'll put him out in the hot house. I'll go with her, Anne. Oh, all right. There, there. It's only a tiny bird. It couldn't hurt anybody. Please don't talk to me about birds. Even a word makes me crawl with loathing. It's a cold terror. Horrible, horrifying feeling. It's awful, isn't it? I can't help it. Of course you can't. Don't even try to. We'll keep Skipper out of your way. Ever since I was a little girl. I can't explain it. Here you are, ma'am. Thank you. You still haven't told me why she yells. Because dear birds frighten her. It's what they call a phobia. What's that? Can you catch it like chicken pox? <laughs> no, darling. A phobia is an exaggerated fear. 
You're afraid of snakes, aren't you? I never saw one. But I'm not afraid of birds. Well, some people are. Others are afraid of cats and bats. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sometimes scared of the dark. That's right. There's no real reason to be afraid of the dark, but you are. Now, that's the best way I can explain it. Poor Skipper. He was scared, too, when she yelled. Good night. Don't. I'm just opening the window to get a little air in here. I don't want you to. Don't you see them? Those leaves there. In the moonlight, they look like birds trying to get in. I was lying here thinking about it. That's what scared me to get in. Look, that's first class moonlight. Don't you think bad things about it? There now, isn't that nice? See? Doesn't look like a bird, does it? Hold it. It's all right, dear. You'll be yourself again in a moment. I'm so sorry, everybody. Here. Now you just drink this. Dan? Tell them I don't do this very often. I'm so sure. Good night. You better go out of bed, dear. I want to talk to Dan. wandering around in the middle of the night for you, young lady. Come on. I'll see that she gets to bed. Do you have a phobia too, Daddy? Yes. What's Daddy's a phobia? Tell her. You. <laughs> you scared of me? Now and then, yes. But don't let it worry you. Good night. Daddy? No, not until you get some more to pack there. <laughs> Quiet you down. I am quiet, Dan. I don't want it now. All right, sweetheart. Right there on the table if you do want it. Please leave the door open. I don't doubt that you'll wind up a medical sensation someday, but no offense, Dan, but don't you think with a girl as innocent as that, we ought to call in a specialist? I just brought her from a specialist. Oh, I didn't know that. Dr. Darian. Rest, change, no emotional excitement. That's the main thing. Well, we'll try not to let things like that happen again. Don't worry about it, please. Well, can I show my favorite girl home? You don't need to, but I'd like it. Good night, Doug. Good night. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, you shouldn't be up. I'll never get to sleep now. Yes, you will. All anybody needs to go to sleep is to have a pretty picture in mind. I don't know any pretty pictures. I'll show you one. What are you doing? Wait. I'll show you how you're going to look after a couple of weeks here. You couldn't manage a smile, could you? No? All right, it'll be there. And after a while, maybe even a dimple. No more shadows under those eyes. Up goes that head. You know, you're terribly hunched over. We'll fix that, too. And that sick walk of yours, you'll get over that, too. Back go those shoulders. Pure body lines to match that beautiful face. There. Isn't that a pretty picture?
trouble with me is I always have to remodel everything. Are you willing? Yes. If you'll help me. Good. And now to sleep. keeps her in her room is that old rapper of hers. I hope you're right, Deb. Quite an expert on women's vanity, aren't you? That's one thing I do know about. <laughs> Lee here won't go to dancing school to put a couple of hair ribbons on her. Then she can't afford to stay away. A right angel person. Can I go to the guinea theater? Yeah, sure. Hey, how about some coffee? Oh, Hilda. Mr. Proctor would like some coffee, please. Mrs. Proctor, somebody's got to wait on that poor girl. She didn't feel like her prune juice this morning. She'd rather have milk. Hot, but not boiled. Because boiling kills the vitamins. Dr. Dan knows. <laughs> well, I'll see what I can do for you. <laughs> By all means, if a negligee will get Evelyn out of that room, let's make it. Hilda will be killing herself. I'll get the material this afternoon. Somebody want coffee? Yeah, right here. I think it'd be much prettier and white. That's why you're wrong. Dark, soft, and velvety. I've been pumping her. Right by you, Dan. Or anything that doesn't remind her of hospital. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I expected coffee. So did I. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I'll get some over at the end. Who's playing who today? Oh, we'll take them on, Chad. It'll be a massacre. Coming along to watch it, Danny? Uh, later, maybe. Thanks, sir. Get along. Hey, <laughs> Oh, 
Well, I'll get busy. Dan, before long, we'll even get her into a tennis outfit. Then you can take her to the inn with the others. At least to watch. Hmm? Sure, Aunt Martha, sure. Yeah, we'll see to that, won't we? Mm -hmm. I'll get this to the dressmaker. You just want to hear it again. <laughs> Shall I stay with her? I'd like to. Well, she'll be all right. Your dad will be back from the beach directly. Miss Proctor, I just hope nobody will tell the minister you were sewing on the Sabbath. Oh, Hilda, I hope nobody will. myself a trip. Did he design one for her, too? Oh, he dresses everyone in this house except me. Me, he undresses. <laughs> I'll be ready in a minute. Which of the shoes? Both. They're just my old slippers. Oh, they won't show at all. That's big to hand. Douglas, you've made me so happy. You know, you've given me an idea. When I get really fed up with this work I'm doing, I think I'll go into the dress business and make millions. Does it really look all right on me? I never dreamed of having anything like this. Maybe that's why you never got it. You know, you've got to dream to get things. Yes, Douglas. I'm ready, Maestro, whenever the fashion show is over. Okay. I'll be glad when this series is finished. Now you sit right down here and look glamorous. I'm sure Dan will be along in a minute. You ready? Just as soon as I change clothes. Dan? Oh, I wanted you to come down, Evelyn. I told you I would if I felt all right. Oh, this color in cheeks, you're beautiful. Dan, would we ever have a house like this? Of 
give you everything I can. A house like this? Well, it depends on how many appendixes I take out, but eventually we could manage it. Dan, aren't you ever afraid I might get so beautiful you'd be jealous of me? I don't think so. Bet you would. I know how you are. Let's not start that again. I was only teasing. I bet you would. Suppose I was unfaithful. Suppose I only wanted to be unfaithful. And you caught me sending a note to someone. Well, I asked you not to talk like this. It was only making believe. What's the harm in that? Suppose I asked you to take the note to him. I wouldn't stand for it. There, you see? You are jealous. I told you I'll never be happy with you. Never. Well, Evelyn, dear, please. It's been like this all the time. Remember Kenneth Harlan? No, my first day of you. Tell me how jealous you're going to be. Evelyn, stop it, dear. Stop it. You started this. I only wanted to see how much you loved me. I was only teasing. All right. Of course you were. All right, dear. Dan, why do we always have to quarrel like this? I don't know, Evelyn. I wish we didn't. I guess it's because we need each other so much. Have to wait so long. I guess that's it. Oh, I can't stand this like it is. I haven't the strength. Oh, with these quarrels. I ought to go back. That's where I belong. You see what happens the first day? I only wanted to please you. What do you want to do? I don't know. You said it would be different here. But it's not, really. Not with us still like this. Maybe if you went away for a little while. And not see you? Till I got really better. You said I looked better. Maybe if we didn't have these setbacks. Maybe after another month or two. And then when you came back, I'd really be standing there waiting for you. I'd come to the end of the walk to meet you. I'd run to meet you. You want me to go? All right, then. Stay if you like. I just thought, I know the hospital needs you. And the sooner you get through there, the sooner we can be on our own. But you do as you see best. Only I'm tired. I'm going upstairs. Help me up. I'll write you twice a day. I'll think of you every minute. I'll leave this afternoon before I change my mind. Carry me upstairs, Dan. Then you can go and pack. It's only because I want that new start you told me about. Yes, darling. Put me down here, Dan. So I can watch you go. I'll let you know about the train. Yes, Dan. Come in. Evelyn. I 
I've never been in an artist studio before. Would I bother you too much? I can give you two minutes anyway. I saw the sign outside. I didn't know whether... It's pretty good equipment, don't you think? How do you like her? Hey, can I take a rest? Yeah, sure. Throw me a cigarette, will you? You make her very beautiful. I had a lot to start with. Until I found her, I had to use two different models. How do you mean? One from the neck down, another from the neck up. But Miriam's got it both ways, right, Miriam? I didn't know you cared, darling. Hey, Matt? You'll have to wait till I get some. Just uh, show Evelyn around, will you? Well, you can see for yourself. Over there is some stuff from a book he did. That whole shelf is his art with a capital A period. And then over here is... What's the... that one? That, oh, that's a sketch of St. Cecilia. He promised a mural for the church. Why didn't he do it? You just don't whip off murals, honey. Not when you've got deadlines for things like this. Is it very difficult to pose? Oh, well, three bucks an hour. It's not too difficult. Did you ever have to pose like this? That's me. At five an hour. <laughs> That's not too bad either. I think I'd rather die than do that. Oh, you're kidding. Will you tell Douglas I'll be in some other time? Douglas, I'm tired. I think I'll go to my room. There, you see, you're overdoing it your first day up. That's it, I guess. There you are. What's the matter with you? You should have heard her giving me the business because I posed that way for you. What'd you expect? She thought you were a nice girl. Just a minute. Ah, be yourself. She's never come up against that sort of thing. Well, they've got statues in parks, haven't they? Ah, forget it. Okay. Only Dan had better be careful. He's likely to find himself married to something in armor. Just let Dan worry about his problems. You know, modesty looks very nice on the right people. All right, I'm squelched. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Miss Modesty, huh? Remember me? Me, giving my all. <laughs> Close the door and sit by me. Are you all right? Mm-hmm. Why did you turn off the music? You can put it on again if you like. Can I? Mr. Hackett would never let me touch it when it was here. You can play it any time you like. Does it make you think of things? It does me. You know the name of it? Lipperstrom. Trial means dream, and Lieber means love. Dream of love. It's very pretty, but you play it all the time. Listen to it. Here you are dreaming. You're waiting for someone. A man, a handsome friend. Just now you won't understand, but you will. You'll know it. 
You'll be kind like your father. You love your father, don't you, Lee? My daddy? You love to feel his arms around you, don't you? <laughs> you wouldn't want someone bad to take him away from you, would you? Mm-mm. Are you old enough to keep a secret? If I tell you one. Come here, Chloe. Oh, Doug, I've got to rest. I'll grow this way. All right, walk around a little bit. If I can. Oh, oh, you don't happen to have any horse liniment, do you? A oh, good chiropractic trick up your sleeve. No, but I got a good one for the back. Oh, yeah, get up, though. Okay. That helps. Oh. <laughs> yeah, put your hands back here, Nick. Oh, oh. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Oh, no. Okay. There, oh. better. Oh, no. That's pretty good. Let me try it on you. No, I don't need it. Sit down. Relax. Lee, what are you doing up there? Lee, what's the matter? Hilda wants you. Lee. Oh, what, is anything wrong? Lee. Lee Proctor. I didn't go after her if I were you. I don't feel much like it myself right now. Hilda, I just saw Lee up in the apple tree. Well, no wonder she looked... Was that ain't right? It wasn't apples. It was something she saw in the studio. You know what I told you about artists? When we first came here, they're an unquestioned lot and always have been. John, you be careful what you say about Mr. Proctor. He's a fine man. A man is only as good as the woman he's with. I'm saying that Lee saw something up there. And what do you expect? The two of them up there, closeted day after day, and that girl half-dressed all the time? You're absolutely wrong. Anyway, I think I'll just go up and comfort her. Just have a real piece of this cake. Poor little lamb. John, don't you dare climb up in that tree. <laughs> don't you feel well, sweetie? Not very. Look what I brought you. I don't want any. Lee, did you eat any apples up in that tree? No. You must have. You don't look very well. What is it, darling? I can't tell you. Why doesn't Mama come? Why doesn't she? She went to see your Uncle Danoff and Mr. Hackett. Tell Hilda what happened, please. Go away. I can't. Maybe you'd like some cake first, and then you'd feel better. I don't care if I ever eat again. Lee, was it something about Miss Blake and your daddy? <laughs> it's warm enough for a nice cold drink, don't you think, Evelyn? We could have it right out here. Yes, I'll tell Hilda. I'll go. Hilda, you're wanted on the porch. Would it be awfully silly if I went out right away and wrote Dan? Well, not silly to Dan, I'm sure. He'd love it. Sure you don't want something to drink, dear? No, thank you. I feel so sorry for her. She had the saddest look in her eyes when Dan left. Well, it good rehearsal. When you're married to a doctor, you're saying quick goodbyes at all hours. Sometimes I complain about Doug, but I guess I'm really lucky. I'll get the ice, dear. Oh, would you? I'll see what I can do about Doug. you understand me that that's a cheap chambermaid trick and I won't stand for it if you'll just let me go please ma'am I'll let you go for good if I ever catch you doing a thing like that again I have 
Well, I'm surprised at you. I thought I knew you better than that. Well, haven't you anything to say for yourself? No, ma'am. I just looked. I thought someone ought to look in there now and then. They're in there so long sometimes, Miss Proctor. Well, of course they are. They're working. <laughs> hmm. Hilda! Is anything wrong? Hilda just made a very stupid mistake. I'm sure she's sorry. <laughs> Anne, I can't stand to see you look like that. What did she do? Nothing. It's all right, really. I'm sorry. I just lost my temper. I got it out of her all right. Oh, the poor little dear. But the terrible thing is, I tried to look in the studio, too. And Miss Proctor caught me, and you think I was dirt under her feet. Called me a cheap chambermaid. And her blind to that blonde thing right under her very nose. John, there are things going on up there. And I can't stay in this house and face that poor Miss Proctor, me knowing it, and that's the truth of it. My gossip that starts in the kitchen can be a very dangerous thing, Hilda. It didn't start in the kitchen, Miss Proctor. But now if you're going to call me out, I can't leave soon enough. <laughs> it wasn't me who saw it first, if you must know. I know only what I see and hear myself. But I did see Miss Proctor. And heard, too. Plenty. And all this time, Miss Proctor being so nice to that girl here. Of course, I don't blame him so much. After all, like John said, him being an artist. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard, Hilda. We all know Douglas too well. And if you've any loyalty, you won't think about this again. And above all, don't say anything to Mrs. Proctor about it. Yes, Miss Proctor. Did you decide to have your drinks here, dear? Oh, uh, oh it is a little cold out there, I guess. In fact, I think I'll go out and get a jacket. Oh, close these doors. Oh, no, no, it's all right. It's fine. I'll be right down. We'll start over again. Shall I carry this? Oh, no, I've got it. Can you use a little of this too, ma'am? Oh, thank you. She'll have some. Must be nice on the beach this morning. I guess I know what you mean, ma'am. I don't mean anything. They're down there, ma'am. Not only them, but Jim and Lee. Or what? Lee, dear. I think you know I'm Excuse me, then, ma'am. What time is it? Somebody give me a new watch, I might know. It's been two o'clock for four days now. All right. Going up to lunch? No, thanks. I want to finish here. Hey, don't you think this will look better with a scallop? Oh, now, Doug, you leave her alone. It's her head. Yes, you tend to your own work. How's it going, by the way? Oh, I don't know what's the matter with me. Well, maybe you need a change. Enjoy some of this nice weather. Miriam must be getting awfully tired of it here. I was thinking perhaps if you took a rest, it might do both of you good. Don't you think so, Miriam? Oh, well, right, was... now, come on. I know what she's up to. See you later. I detect a slight bum's rush. Sure you did. Every June it's the same. They want me to lay off so they can pack me off on picnics. Oh, Mr. Proctor, Hilda asked me to tell you lunch will be late. Okay, but tell her I'm hungry. Beg your pardon? She also asked me to tell you why. I don't care why. All right, why? She's had to spend most of the morning in Miss Blake's room. 
Seems to me, Mr. Proctor, with all the other things Hilda has to do here. Well, all I care is let's eat. Tell Hilda when we get it, it better be good. Doug. Oh, what? It's just that... Hi. What are you two up to? Godless. Now I really feel like Cinderella. Look, I have new slippers, too. They're okay. I told you to leave it to Anne. And John says lunch will be late. Will you see what you can do? Yes, I will, Doug. Did you have a nice swim, Miriam? Oh, yes. Well, thanks. Anne, don't you think we'd better get the flowers now? Yes, of course. I'll get the best. Hilda, what are you griping about? I didn't ask you to clean up here today. I was under the impression you did, miss. Well, then get your impression straight. All I said was if you did clean up here... Miss Blake, I've always been very proud of my housekeeping, and I hope justly so. I just now, you won't find any dust in any corners. Here, will you please? I'm sorry, I'm busy. Why didn't you call me? I've been waiting for that turpentine for two days. I'll be right over. Can you imagine that at the station? Doug, I want to talk to you. Something is going on here, and I don't like There's it. There's nothing going on around here. No lunch, no work, no... Doug, have, have I hurt somebody's feelings? Look, Miriam, I'm sorry if I've been cross with you. It's just that... Not you. Haven't you noticed how strange Lee is with me? And Hilda... How do you mean, strange? Well, Lee won't talk to me. When I speak to her, she runs away. Why don't you kiss and make up? But we haven't fought, Doug. It's just something that's come up all of a sudden. She probably just wants to play. She's on vacation now. Maybe your Aunt Martha's right. Maybe a change would do us good. You're doodling all the time anyway. And the cereal's certainly not getting anywhere. You need a bracer. Come with me to the station. I'll buy you one on the way back. Maybe that's it. How late is it? Huh? Oh. I know. Still two o'clock on that thing. Guess I will have to get you a new watch. And I told Miss Blake a thing or two. You know, Miss Proctor, I can't be in her room and in the kitchen, too. And don't bother to fix anything for us. We'll have some lunch at the inn. Well, it's almost ready now, Doc. Well, I have to go to the station anyway. Want to come along? No. No, thank you. Well, see you later. Bye, Ed. Well, let me know when it's ready, Hilda. Uh, there's your face, Evelyn. Poor Miss Proctor. You know, Miss Heath, I think I ought to tell you something. Yes? Well, just the same. All afternoon, and now, how long does the person have to put up with it? Come on, lovey, you not all beg if you don't eat. Maybe they had a flat tire. No, oh, of course. They'll probably use that one. But I'm not going to stand for it for another minute. It's so quiet here, isn't it, Aunt Martha? Yes. After a while, you get so you wouldn't give any other place in the world. And yet you always feel the sea out there. Rough and cruel and mean. Oh, in winter it is. I like it that way, though. I'd like to hear it pounding. I like things to be like that. Things can't always be the same. Or people. Like Dan, I mean. He can be so fierce and stern one moment. And then when he smiles... <laughs> That's right. There. I think I'm pretty smart at alterations. Mind if I wash up in here? Of course not. After 8.30 and everything's ruined. How long am I supposed to hold it, Miss Proctor? I'm sorry, Hilda. I know it's difficult for you, but just a few more minutes, please. Didn't you telephone? All right. Go see if Aunt Martha and are ready. We'll be right down. Yes, ma'am. What time is it now, John? And to be exact, it's 8.39.59 one half seconds. Now say 40. Was there he first mother sweet Molly Malone? 
Oh, we go in, Susan. She ain't so bad. Two streets wide and narrow, crying cockles, muscles, a life. Let me carry him over. Let's cook him first and surprise her with him for dinner. Maybe they've already eaten. Oh, it's not that, eh? Is it? It's two o'clock. No. It's two in the morning. It's two in the morning. Get shoes off. Let's play burglar. Take shoes off, play burglar. Take shoes off, play burglar. It's a dirty girl, Bez, leaving all the lights on. Come on, Doug, let me in. Who's there? I have to speak to Ann about that. What does he think electricity grows on? Trees? Turn out that light. Turn out the light. Oh, muscles warm. Wasn't that fun waiting? You know, I like waiting better than swimming any time. It doesn't sober me up so much. Are you cockeyed? <laughs> Listen to who's talking. I guess you just decorate all the bar mirrors from the other Boston. Soap pictures, he says. I'll trade you soap pictures for drinks. <laughs> I bet we could travel from here across the United States. <laughs> You drawing pictures, <laughs> and me drinking. <laughs> Come on, where are you? Here I am. Oh, okay. Everything will be hunky dory if you just don't squeak on the stairs. You mustn't wake him up. Stop squeaking. I'm not squeaking. Yeah, I do squeak. What's everybody doing up? Hilda. Hi, honey. Go downstairs and stop serving dinner, please. We got muscles for you. A lie, Hilda. Not me, Miss Proctor. I served my last dinner in this house. <laughs> yep. I'll get dinner on in. Douglas, we've been waiting dinner for a long time. You'd better hurry. We've waited dinner till two o'clock in the morning for us. Better hurry. Find a couple of burglars. We are. I'll be down on that. <laughs> Evelyn, I'm terribly sorry. It'll be all right. Let's go on down. Anne, you're so right to close your eyes to it. Before I rolled in like this before. I'd rather not discuss it now, Douglas. Morning will be all right. What's there to discuss? Plenty. But I'd rather wait. And didn't you ever feel off the beam? Remember when... I phoned the inn, but you weren't there. You had been there, though. Everybody seemed to know that. Well, that's why we left. We took a little drive to sober up. You did a fine job of it, didn't you? This isn't like you, Ann. What's the matter with you? Well, what do you think is the matter with me? Oh, Douglas, I tried to warn you the other day. I asked you, please, to... But you don't seem to care what other people think. I don't. All I care is what you think. Well, what do you expect me to think? I've tried desperately not to, but you keep... What? Is there anything between you and Miriam? You shouldn't have asked that, Anne.
I am asking it. I wish you hadn't. Douglas! Miriam! Don't do that, please. Why not? It's what you wanted to know, isn't it? You asked it, you'll have the answer. I want my answer from you, Douglas. You're in such a state, if I told you no, you wouldn't believe me. Would you? I don't know. Like that. What Ann just told me sobered me much quicker. <laughs> Mad, huh? You shall get over it. I've got it all straight in my mind. It was my fault. I didn't feel like working, and you were just being a gentleman, that's all. <laughs> well, if it's my fault, everything's all right, isn't it? It isn't just this afternoon, Miriam. Ann thinks something's been going on between you and me. I told you this morning that something was cooking around here, but you wouldn't listen. Where are you going? I've been accused before, but never by anyone like Anne. Anybody else, I don't give two cents. But Anne... On the station and get Mr. Blossom and Blob. I can't blame you. For the road. And I hope it's a good road, kid. I'll send you a postcard. I'm sorry, I'm late. I had a little poker game going on. Well, you'll snap it up. You can get back to it. Douglas. Anne. No, Douglas, it's me. Evelyn, you want something? Why didn't you ring? No, I don't want anything. I thought I heard voices down here, and then I heard a car leave. Is anything wrong? No. Then why do you drink like that? When Papa drank, it made him unhappy. Maybe it began the other way. He was unhappy first. You weren't unhappy, Douglas. No, like a lot. You weren't unhappy this morning. Things haven't been right here for quite a while. It's nice of you to pretend you don't know, but you must have heard. Yes, Douglas. I tried to stop her. She didn't talk to you about it. Not exactly talk. But I've seen her watching you. It worried me because of Lee. Lee? You know how impressionable children are. I tried to keep her from finding it out. Anne's been so good to me. I don't know what's me. gotten into Anne. Oh, now I've only upset you more. Poor Douglas. Well, you gotta get your sleep. I'm just sorry that you had to go through this. I hope it won't sour you in my life. Never, Douglas. If I ever get jealous of Dan, I'll never show it. I'm sure you won't. I can't even afford to be jealous with my heart. It must be hard to keep so calm, so peaceful. I have to be. I learn about peace. You know, lying awake nights, alone, knowing it may come any moment. But it's helped being here. You know it has. You've done so much. Now I only wish I could help you and Anne to get back like you used to be. There's only some way of showing you. I don't think there's anything you can do, but thanks. Good night. Douglas! She'll get over it if you give her time. But if you go in there now and quarrel... Oh, I guess you're right. And if I could help you out until you get another model... <laughs> oh, no. You didn't laugh when you drew this. I'm an idiot. What's the matter with me? 
Now I know why I've been sketching that face of yours. Why, Douglas? You just hurry up and get some beauty sleep. You've got a job starting tomorrow. Yes, Douglas. Jinx, I can't get it to come out right. You're wrong, Douglas. You mustn't be impatient. You'll get it soon, I know you will. What's the total? Wouldn't think six weeks could make such a dent. Well, I still say take that money of mine and you and Doug go off on a trip. That's what you need. No, darling, I'm afraid that wouldn't do it. Thanks, just the same. Anybody need a slightly handy man? Good heavens, Ann. No hill to the yap at me, no John, no Lee to climb all over me. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh. Martha, look who's here. Well, Ernest, how nice. Oh. Hello, Martha. I still say, what is going on here? Oh, <laughs> just the summer doldrums, I guess. Well, anyway, that's what you get for walking in on a lady. I hope you appreciate that nice long letter that I wrote you. Oh, yes. And the P.S. It's a funny thing, isn't it, how everybody always puts the important things in the P.S. Oh, that's John Doe. Oh, well, I don't remember. P.S. By the way, Ernest, would you mind skipping this next weekend? Better still, wait until I write again. That was weeks ago. Anyway, you're here now. And you know we're always glad to have you. Some of us, anyway. Anne, do we have to beat this bird out of brush? I ran into Miriam yesterday. Oh, really? How is she? She told me the whole thing. Surely you can't believe Ernest, it. Ernest, I'd rather not talk about it. You don't have to. I want to talk about it. I... Ernest... I want my old job back. What do you say? I think it would be wonderful. For me, you'd turn your life upside down. Ernest is right. Well, you don't by any chance think my life is right side up now, do you? My husband drinks himself into a stupor every night. Doug drinking? Seriously? Quite. Since Miriam left, the only time he's sober is when he's at the church. At the church? <laughs> Doug? He's painting Evelyn as Saint Cecilia. A donation. He's been at it for weeks. That's where they are now. Lovely, isn't it? To what extremes a guilty conscience will lead a man? So Evelyn has been a great help. Hmm? Well, except for that leader's job. That nearly drives me mad. Mommy, who's down there? Riley. I'm up here, in Evelyn's room. Oh, oh, well, come down, dear. Ernest is here. And, of course, there are the nightmares. She roused the whole household the other night with her screaming. Martha, your brother Ben only snored. What's my brother Ben got to do with it? Just an observation. What kind of nightmares? Well, well, Lydia, why did you get undressed? Mommy... Could I have my dinner on a tray? Lee, aren't you going to say hello to me? Hello, Ernest. I don't feel very well. I feel weak. Lee, you know that's absolute nonsense. Besides, dear, we won't be having dinner for hours yet. I can hardly get my breath. Lee, please come down. <laughs> I won't come down. I won't. Oh, Mommy. 
I love you very much. All right, darling. I'll bring dinner up to you. Thank you, Mommy. Anne, how long has she been like that? Since the trouble about Miriam. Children sense those things. Oh, I've done everything to make her forget it in front of her. I've tried to be with Doug as I always was, but... Anne, can't you see she's only aping Evelyn? Oh, she's just upset. Her father's away all the time. I'm cross and irritable. That's not it. She's turning neurotic, imitating an invalid. Oh, Ernest. Think back, Anne. When did things start going wrong around here? I don't know. I, I'm all mixed up. About two months ago. How long has Evelyn been here? Two months. Exactly. Your trouble didn't start with Miriam. It started the day you took that sick little, sweet little invalid into your hearts. Oh, but that's absurd. How could she be responsible for all this mess? No, I won't believe it. I can't. Well, my brother Ben managed it. He wasn't even able to get out of an invalid's chair. That's why I mentioned the dear departed before. Your brother Ben wasn't the only one who was paralyzed. He paralyzed you, kept you from marrying, living a life of your own. Sometimes sickness puts greatness into people. Sometimes it goes the other way. Persecution complex. The desire to control and destroy. And you've got to do something. Get her out of the house. Oh, Ernest, I can't. But I have a responsibility. Dan, let me. And your I... only responsibility is toward your family. Well, let me take Evelyn for a while. If Ernest is wrong, there's no harm done. If he's right... A little while ago. You didn't bring very nice weather. Where's Douglas? He's taking a walk on the beach. He's so upset. He's still not satisfied with the painting. Evelyn, wait a moment, please. You and Ernest go into the cottage. I'll phone you later. Don't be too long, Anne. Evelyn, won't you come and sit down? You're not too tired to talk a little, are you? No. What is it, Anne? Evelyn, how would you like a, a change of scene for a few weeks? Change of scene? Where? What do you mean? Aunt Martha's invited you to stay with her for a while. I'd rather not. Well, you'd be doing me a favor if you would. Lee hasn't been feeling very well, and I have all the housework to do. I don't ask you to wait on me. Of course you don't. I, I know that, Evelyn, but... Anyway, I'm not home very much. Practically the whole day at the church. That's another thing. I'm sorry to have to mention it, but... Douglas has to go back to his illustrating. We need the money. Why blame me for that? Is that how you're trying to get rid of me? To some place where you'll be comfortable. I'm comfortable here. I won't go to that hateful old woman, Evelyn. How can you talk that way about Aunt Martha? I know what you're trying to do. You want to get me away from Douglas. He comes to me when you've driven him half crazy. You hate me, don't you? You're jealous. Jealous? Of you? Yes. You're sending me away because you're jealous of me. Why should I be jealous? Because he prefers me to you. Because you've lost him. Why, you nasty little fool. You're in love with my husband. He's not in love with you. He slept in the studio for weeks. You nag him. You quarrel with him all the time. Like this, don't do this, don't do that. Or even jealous of his painting. You hate it because it's always been his dream. And now I'm a part of it. And I always will be. You're a little monster. You're going to get out of this house tonight. I'll bet I don't. Douglas, don't let her. She's going to get rid of me. 
And what have you done to her? She hates me. She said horrible things. What is it now, Anne? What have you said to her? Let me handle this, Douglas. I know what I'm doing. She said I was too much trouble. I try not to be any trouble. You know that. Aren't you ashamed? I want to speak to you alone, Doug. She called me a monster. Asked her if she didn't. And what have I done? What have I done? The girl's in love with you, Douglas. What's happened to you, Anne? First it was Miriam, now it's Evelyn. Why didn't you accuse Hilda? I didn't accuse anybody. She just admitted it. I told her I loved you. Of course I love you. Why shouldn't I? You've done everything for me. She hates me. Because you're painting me. She's jealous. Oh, why did Dad ever bring me here? Why? <laughs> Evelyn, go upstairs. Nobody's going to find you that way. No blood. <laughs> see what you've done to her. She's not that sick. She's not so weak that she can't ruin our lives. I'd examine myself about that if I were you. Oh, I have. I was wrong about Miriam. I know that now. But you're not wrong about this. No, I'm not. Blaming someone else for your own mistakes is a shabby trick. Oh, Douglas, it isn't only us. She, she's having a dreadful effect on Lee, too. She's turning her into a neurotic. Douglas, can't you see she's dangerous? There's something terribly wrong with the girl. If you could have seen her face when I asked her to go to Aunt Martha, she, she called her a hateful old woman. Well, maybe she doesn't like Aunt Martha. What's that got to do with her? Then she accused me of being jealous of her. Well, aren't you? No. I, I'm only frightened, terribly frightened. Oh, Anne. Because you're so blind, Douglas. Don't you understand? She said she was in love with you. She said it in front of me. I never heard anything more innocent. You're hysterical, Anne. I can't stand by and see you wreck the life and health of a girl who hasn't done anything to you. Dan will never forgive you for this, and neither will I. Douglas! Now what? Nothing. Your nerves are shot, Anne. You get hold of yourself. Please. Aunt Martha, Ernest is right. She's like something out of a nightmare. I'm going away for a while and take Lee. Maybe Douglas will come to his senses. Let me speak to Ernest, please. Yes, Ernest. Call the station, please.
I'm not frightened. I like it like this. All the violence outside, and in here it's so still. But I was a little lonely. Where did you go? Back to the church. To look at the saint. What a masterpiece. You're not fair to yourself, Douglas. You haven't tried anything like that in a long time. You've got too much on your mind. Maybe so. I'm sorry about that scene this afternoon. And didn't mean it. Of course not. It was silly of me to go to pieces. But I can't bear to see anyone unhappy. I don't know what's got in there, everybody. Hands on edge, Lee's sick, I can't paint. Something's wrong with everything. Not with me, Douglas, not anymore. I'm well now, strong. And just because I've, I've been so happy. You keep on being happy, Evan. That's what you're here for. Anne upstairs? No, she's gone. Gone where? I don't know. Maybe she went to Aunt Martha's. Yes, that's it, I remember now. I said some pretty brutal things this afternoon. You think I should call her? You can't call her. The phone's dead. It is, eh? The wire's probably down. Poor duck. Nothing's right, is it? I'll get you a drink. I know. But you've had such a miserable day. I've never known anything like this. For the last few weeks, I've learned to know gentleness and beauty. Even fun. The House of Proctor kind. House of Proctor. Dan told you we were a very unusual family. It's not the family, Douglas. Let me tell That's you. That's the look I've tried to paint. It's beautiful. I'll get it on canvas someday. I hope I can. You will, Douglas. You'll find your way back. Back to what? I'm all mixed up. This house used to be fun. I was a guy that liked life. You can love it now. Because you can do what you want with it. As simple as that. Of course, Doug. There's nothing standing in your way. Wait a minute. Just Dan, you know what I'm No, it's you. No one else but you. You must know that. I sent him away for you. And I don't want him to ever come back again. Are you out of your mind? Don't look at me like that. You afraid Anne's coming back? She won't, because she's gone, too, for good. What are you talking about? True. She left without a second. This is our house now, yours and mine. Think what that means, Douglas. Every morning I can come downstairs and fix the flowers. And Hilda and John will be here, too. And they'll say, yes, Mrs. Proctor, to me, as they did to her. Evelyn! And there won't be any low, vulgar women in our house with their dirty desires. You can thank me and my love for you. You made me strong so I could be like this. Little Saint Cecilia. No wonder I couldn't paint a saint. I guess it's no use. She's gone for good with an attack. It. Look. Goodbye, she said goodbye. Douglas, she's not worth it. She's not worth it. Get away from me. Go back to your room and stay there. Don't, Douglas, don't. Douglas. Just pulled out, Mr. Proctor. Oh, God. 
Douglas. I'm glad you didn't go. I couldn't go. And I couldn't go back. I didn't know what to do, so I had Ernest go off. Something happened just now. I'm sorry I had to learn I was wrong from her. I wish I'd believed you. Oh, it doesn't matter, darling. So long as you know now. I love you. Oh, it doesn't. I feel as if I've been on a long, long journey and just come home. She cried herself to sleep. She didn't understand. What are we going to do now? It's very simple. You had the right hunch. We'll get rid of her. But what about Dan? We'll explain to him later. It's our lives. Of course it is, only... Well, maybe we can make it easier for him. Let's see what we can figure out. We'd better take Lee to Aunt Martha's. There might be trouble tonight. All right, dear. I knew you'd come back. I knew it. I've been waiting for you. Evelyn, there isn't anything you can do anymore. We have quite a fair proposition to make to you. As your father's unable to take care of you, we've decided that we will. We'll send you somewhere, a sanitarium. I won't go to any hospital. Not a hospital. A place where you can live and have people to look after you. There's one near Boston. And we'll even go into Hawk to keep you there. But only on one condition. Are you listening to me, Evelyn? I'm listening. You'll write to Dan and tell him that you've gotten worse. And that you've decided you can't ever see him again. Because marriage would be impossible. And very gently, bit by bit, you'll break it to him that you're not in love with him anyway. Douglas, let her go upstairs now. Will you do that, Evelyn? Just answer me. I won't ask you to give me your word. Are you through with me now? Yes. You'll write your letter first thing in the morning. I'll make sure it's mailed. I'll take her down there myself tomorrow. In the meantime, darling, I'd better stretch out down here. But why? What for? Just to be on the safe side. She's being a little too quiet for my liking. No telling what she might think of. Can't you get along without me for a while again? Well, it's only for a little while. Anyway, who do we think we are, honeymooners? Good night, Douglas. Come to think of it, that's not a bad idea. Go on a second honeymoon. Back to Montreal. Montreal? It was good enough for the first one and not the second. Uh, what scenery? Darling. We honeymooned in Quebec. Long distance, please. 
Operator, I want Baltimore. Dr. Dan Proctor at the Presbyterian Hospital. Did you catch all the other lights, honey? Mm-hmm. They must have been burning for hours. You could have gotten up and turned them off, you know. Who cares? Who cares about things like that anymore? Whoever cares? Darling, why do you suppose we don't hear from her? Maybe if I took a frying pan with some bacon in it and waved it in front of the keyhole. No, she'd probably go on a hunger strike. <laughs> anyway, there's plenty of time to wake her before the train goes. Does Aunt Martha know it's all set for her to go? Mm-hmm. I called her. They're on their way up here now. Anne, let's not ever have anybody in the guest room again. Anyway, not for a long, long time. Mommy, look! Look, Daddy! What is it, Angel? We want to feed him. Oh, darling, what a shame. He's real sad. I touched him. Birds grow old, too, you know, like people. We've had Skipper a long while. Do you think that's it? I did feed him yesterday. Really, I did. Sure, Skipper probably just got tired of singing and went somewhere else. Anyway, he may even sing there, too, you don't know. And have you got a box or something? Yes, I think I can find something. Come on, Angel. We'll take him out and put him in the family plot next to Solomon. Next to the cap? Will he like that? I don't think he'll mind. Not now. There you are, darling. Thank you, Mother. <laughs> That's where Dick Solomon's great. Probably there's all his bones there, too. He likes Skipper. That's enough. Now, you go over there and lie down. You know, I don't think it would be silly at all to say a prayer for Skipper. A prayer for yourself wouldn't hurt either. Why, Daddy? Don't you think you ought to ask forgiveness for hating people? You mean Miriam? Didn't Aunt Martha talk to you about it? Mm, she said Evelyn was going away and Miriam was coming back. And I must be nice to her. You will, won't you, darling? Sure, I will. I'll be back later. Where's that one? Why, Dan, she's upstairs. What's wrong, Evelyn? You said that... I know, dear. I don't want to talk about it now. I wanted you to come for a more important reason. Dan, we can be married today. And I'll go back with you. We don't have to wait any longer. That's what I've been waiting for. Aren't you going to let them congratulate us? Well, you think it was a shock to someone. Yeah. Aren't you happy for us? Martha. Why doesn't somebody say something? I'm sure Douglas will want to congratulate us, won't you? We're waiting, Douglas. What the devil is this all about? Evelyn, are you sure you want to marry Dan? Is there any reason why I shouldn't? Oh, I'm sorry everyone is in such a strange mood this morning, darling. I wish you'd let me in on this. All right, Dan. But you won't like it. And it won't be easy on any of us. We didn't know exactly how to tell you. Maybe this will. You don't have to read it to me, Douglas. I know every word. I don't think you realize, Dan, this is Evelyn's diary. I know. She used to read it to me sometimes. You know the things she said in here about you? Yes. It doesn't make any difference, Doug. That's the way it is. But you don't know the things she said about me. June 14th. I love Douglas more and more. He's everything I ever wanted in a man. Yes, I wrote that, Dan. I told her there was a quarrel. That's what Anne and I quarreled about. But, Douglas, you didn't read the last page. I left it there so you could read it to Dan. I've been a fool. 
I thought I loved Douglas. But tonight I realize how wrong I was. I must go back to Dan and never leave him again. You don't believe that, Dan? Yes, I do. I'm through with the diary now, Douglas. I want you to keep it always, so that you'll never forget me. Evelyn. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I shouldn't have said that. But they've all been so horribly unkind and unfair. No, no, Evelyn. We came pretty close, but you're jumping over. See you outside. I have a feeling, Evelyn, that you may not be coming back here. There are a few little things in my place. I'd like to get them. As you like, dear. You better hurry, dear. How can you do this to him? You can't really love him. It's odd how sure you can be of today. And so unsure of tomorrow. Today I love him very much. You'll be lonely for a while. But you'll get used to it. I've been lonely all my life. Only one thing I regret. I would have liked this house. Quite pretty for a little one. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is what? Where is it? It's not in the cage. Where is it? Lee let it out. Here? Yes. Yes. It was here just a moment ago. In this room? Where is it? Don't just stand there. Where? Do you see it? Oh, I'm not looking for it. I'm not afraid of birds. Be in there, too. Please, that father. Help me. Find it. Find it. What makes you think it's not a bear? Birds fly, you know. They can go anywhere. Everywhere. 